You know what's my favorite pastime? Blowing money I don't have on a game that I'm not sure that I'll like just because a random generator told me to. That sounds like fun. Jokes aside, I went ahead and used NSGreviews.com to select five random games to purchase and download from the Nintendo Switch eShop. And we're going to go through them one by one and see what my first impressions are. Are they going to be good or absolutely terrible? Who knows? Let's just get started. First off, we got Barricade Z Revisited. Some type of tower defense strategy game, judging by the description. I certainly do like that type of genre, but will this game actually hold up? The fact that there is no score on this website to speak of worries me. So if this game, you are an invincible robot tasked to build structures against waves of enemies in order to protect a human baby, there's the actual building portion, as well as gathering resources to build from underground and crafting the materials on the surface. I really wanted to like this game. The graphics are nice, I like the idea, and the music is a bit of a bop, but one thing holds it back on the Switch. The controls. I looked up this game and it seems like it was on PC before, which makes a lot of sense. Moving the cursor with a joystick and trying to click onto the right menus is cumbersome with a controller and joystick. This game is much better suited to PC. There's also quite a bit of a learning curve with the controls, and some of the text isn't translated right into English, which makes some of the instructions a bit funnily worded. For me, this wasn't my thing. It was a bit of a chore to get through, but maybe it would be better on PC. If this seems like your cup of tea, Either get it on Steam, or just remember that the joystick makes it a bit tricky to move around. Next, we got Tanny Nanny, a puzzle game. This looks like it could be very cute, but sometimes when it comes to puzzle games, people get rather lazy with it, so that fact does worry me. And Tanny Nanny, you are tasked with moving around sections of stages. The primary objective is getting Tanny and Nanny to reunite. However, there are items like crystals you can grab as well in order to score extra points. If Tanny or Nanny fall off the stage, then you have to try again. This game is adorable and honestly pretty addicting. It's a simple puzzle concept that they build complexity onto to make it enjoyable, which is how some puzzle games should be. Honestly, I could see myself in the future playing this if I want to pass the time with a cute puzzle game, and it's only $4.99 in the US. That is not a bad deal at all. Honestly, go check it out. Next up is Windbound. If this game is good, that would be incredible. It is an adventure game with crafting elements, and it gives me a little bit of a Wind Waker vibe. If this is good, it might be another adventure game to keep in my library. First off, I have to say, this game is absolutely gorgeous. The music isn't super complex, but it's really pleasant to listen to. These two elements alone make this game super relaxing to play. The crafting mechanic is pretty decent too, and the sailing is more complex than I thought it would be, but in a good way. I thought it would be more like Wind Waker where you just kind of push your joystick and the boat would sail. With this, you do have mechanics of raising and lowering the sail, tightening or loosening it against the wind. It's actually more complex, which is a treat. Sometimes tightening it up against the wind doesn't make it move quite the way I want it to. It would be nice to have a rowing option or maybe for the sailing to be adjusted a little bit, but um, once I get moving, it's pretty good. There are a couple things holding this back from being a fantastic game though. Let's go over some of the minor issues first. Sometimes the game will freeze or drop frames. I don't know if it's pushing the Switch software or what, but luckily it doesn't happen too much. Normally the camera can be moved around, but there have been a couple times where the camera would just lock into a different position and then I would fall and hurt myself because I can't see what's going on. I do also wish there was more options of customizing your boat. I try to put down both a basket and a bag rack for storage and it wouldn't let me put down both even though I clearly had room on my deck. Things like that would really go a long way. The major issue, however, is the combat system. It's a bit clunky and you do have to fight a lot to get required items to move the story along. It's not as tight as, say, Breath of the Wild. And if you die, even in adventure mode where you get to keep your stuff, you start over. So you have to go for the combat over and over and over and over again. I'm just glad I picked Adventurer instead of Survivalist because I died a lot from the combat in this game 
and I would hate to lose all of my items in the survivalist rogue style. Despite its flaws, I did enjoy the game and I will continue to play it to see where the story goes. And with it being 1999, I don't feel ripped off. Would I say go rush and buy the game? Not necessarily, but if you keep the flaws of the game in mind and are still interested, I would say go check it out. And developers, if you touch up on a couple of these things, either with this game or a sequel or something like that, I feel like it would be a lot better. There is a potential gem sitting here, it's just a little bit rough around the edges. Next up is R-Type Final 2. Listen, I cheated a little bit with this and downloaded the free demo. However, I'm not spending 40 bucks on a game that I have no idea if I'll like. I'm too broke for that. It seems to be a space theme shoot 'em up, I think. We'll have to see how it goes. So in this game, you are a space fighter that is trying to protect humanity from aliens in this arcade style shooter game. This type of game isn't necessarily my cup of tea, so I guess take my first impressions with a grain of salt. It does control really well and the graphics are nice to look at. And when you are able to chain up power-ups for the level, it is a ton of fun. However, it does suck that if you get hit once, either by terrain or a stray bullet, then you're just dead. And if you die too much in a level, which is what I did on normal, you have to watch the cutscenes all over again in order to continue playing. The demo was rather short, it only included one level. I don't know how the full game is, or how long it is. Personally, I won't spend 40 bucks on it just because I don't like this type of style. However, if you like the style after playing the demo, then go ahead and give this a try. Finally, we have The Last Days. The fact that this game was 80% off upon purchase really worries me. It's some kind of adventure puzzle game. Again, the fact that it's a puzzle game could be good or bad. Considering how much of a discount it was at, I have to say it's probably bad. But let's not judge a book by its cover. You basically are a woman going on vacation near the Bermuda Triangle. You investigate strange happenings around this area as well as try to save the world or something. Well, unfortunately with this game, you could only play it in handheld mode, which it so lovingly decides to tell me in the beginning, except not really. So I unfortunately can't show you guys much footage of the game. The biggest problem with it being limited touchscreen only is the fact that you can't see a lot of the parts of the screen because of the tiny details. So I end up clicking all over the screen to try to figure out the next step because I can't see what I'm doing. I don't understand why they couldn't just have it where you move the cursor with the joystick and click with the A button so you could play it on a bigger screen, but I digress. Most of the puzzle mechanics seem to be either sliding tile puzzles, I spy, line up things from small as the tallest, or click around and try to figure out what to do, which is what I did a lot. I'm not super invested in the story either. This lady isn't investigating these things for any apparent reason from what I understand. She's just like, oh, I guess I'll go sniff around Ernest Hemingway's favorite spot to find some convoluted way to locate a viking helmet. Ooh. I don't think I can even finish the game because one of the staffs that I located is now just gone in one of the temple rooms and I can't figure out how to progress. And it doesn't help that the hints are about as useful as using a pancake to barricade your door. And honestly, I don't care. I'm glad it was 80% off. It isn't even worth the price that I paid. So to sum it up, here are my final opinions on the games from my favorite to least favorite. Tani Nani is a super cute and addicting puzzle game. I highly recommend it if you have the extra cash. Windbound is a bit rough around the edges. However, if you want some nice eye candy and you keep its flaws in mind, it's not too bad either. Our type Final 2 is not my cup of tea. However, I won't call it bad. If you like arcade style shooters, you'll like this one. Barricade Z would probably just be better on the computer. More people seem to like it there than on Switch. The controls are just too janky on this platform. And don't even bother with the last days. It's a bad excuse for a puzzle game and a bad excuse for a point and click game. But I hope you guys liked this video and watching me throw my money out the window. And hey, maybe you guys found a hidden gem or two along the way. If you want to see more of this type of content, go ahead and let me know because I definitely won't mind. Though, perhaps I should set a budget. <laughs> but until next time, this is Dance Macabre, signing off.